Before the construction of any project, the architect carefully prepares working plans so that correct coordination of all trades is ensured. The principles of building construction are the same for all types of work, no matter how large or how small. The examples to be shown are applied to the construction of a house, but the principles involved may also be applied to larger types of construction. Besides good principles or methods, successful construction is dependent on one, good planning, two, good craftsmanship, and three, good teamwork. Firstly, one must be certain of the strength of the foundation. The trenches have been excavated to receive the footings, the wooden hurdles correctly placed and marked with a saw cut so that the setting outlines can be stretched between them. To strengthen the concrete steel, reinforcing rods are used, which form reinforced concrete beams when complete. Each length is fabricated before laying in the trench. The rods are twitched together with tie wire at all crossings. This job employs a continuous concrete mixing plant. The mixer can deliver large quantities of concrete for any period required. Watch how the materials go into the hopper. First, the aggregate. Now, the cement. And the sand. The proportions of these materials vary according to the strength of mixture required. The correct amount of water is added whilst the materials are being mixed in the revolving drum. When mixed for the required length of time, the concrete is conveyed to its position on the job. The concrete is rammed or puddled in between and around the reinforcing bars, and lime must be slaked before mixing with sand to form mortar, and lime should stand for several days before using. The bricklayer turns the mortar over with his trowel to make it smooth and workable. The first course on top of the concrete footing is laid. Piers are bonded into the walls to support the floor bearers. These attached piers are in line with the sleeper piers. The damp course is most important, and in this position it prevents dampness rising in the wall. Here, the architect inspects the placing of the damp course. Wall ties are necessary at regular intervals, both horizontally and vertically. Air bricks are essential for underfloor ventilation. They also ventilate the wall cavity. The reinforced concrete floors are supported on a brick corbel course. When completed, this course is grouted in with cement mortar to make it solid. The drainer is at his work whilst the remainder of the building proceeds. The drains are carefully taken through external walls and turned up to floor level to receive the waste from interior plumbing fittings. Note the different fittings necessary. The sewerage service pipes are being laid to a predetermined fall. The drainer seals all collars with cement mortar so that no leaks can occur. Inspection openings are provided, particularly at points where the drains change direction. The building is up to floor level, and before the floor timbers are fixed in position, ant caps are placed on top of all piers to prevent the timbers becoming infested by white ant. Note the sleeper pier is opposite the attached wall pier. The bearers are then placed into position and the floor joists correctly spaced on top of the bearers. The brickwork is up to windowsill height. The window reveals are formed and the undersill flashing is carefully placed in position. The fireplace and chimney breast are being built and the window frames are lifted into position and securely attached to the brickwork where it abuts against the frame. The construction of a corner window. Note the corner column being placed inside the wood construction to support the steel angles which in turn are necessary to support the brickwork over the windows. Note flashing at sill level again. A flashing is also built in above all window and door openings to prevent dampness dropping or running down the cavity and lodging on top of the frames. The moisture passes outside through weep holes. The architect is inspecting the window construction to see that it has been carried out according to specification and the bricklayer is checking his levels to prepare for the wall plate. As a finale to his work, the bricklayer builds and completes the chimney. The chimney tray, which acts as a damp course, is placed into position. 
Note the weep holes which are left in the brickwork to allow moisture trapped by the tray to escape to the outside. Meanwhile, the carpenters are busy on the ground cutting and preparing the roof timbers. Note the bird's mouth cut in this rafter for fixing to the wall plate. In the roof, the carpenters are nailing the ceiling joists to a hanging beam. Down below, the carpenters are cramping the flooring boards for securely nailing to each floor joist. In the roof again, they are assembling and nailing into position the pre-cut roofing timbers. The roof construction is finally inspected by the architect as it nears completion. This tradesman is plugging the wall for the fixing of a door jamb, whilst an electrician sets a recessed switch box in the wall and securely cements it in position. The door jamb is now lifted into place, plumbed and nailed to the plugs. A last glimpse of the bricklayer is seen as he carefully places the capping course, thus completing the chimney. Before the tiler commences to lay the tiles, the roof plumber must fix the eaves gutter because the tiler works from the gutter upwards. The roof tiler is the next tradesman to come onto the job. His job is to cover and make watertight the roof framework erected by the carpenter. We now see the roof tiler carrying stacks of tiles onto the roof ready for laying. Watch how carefully and easily he walks along the open roof and stacks the tiles on the battens ready for laying. Now observe how he lays the tiles quickly and without hesitation. The plumber in the meantime is connecting the downpipe to the eaves gutter. Back again with the roof tiler we see him cutting and fitting the tiles to the hip. Watch how he marks and cuts the tile to the required shape. After the tiler has laid the roofing tiles around the chimney, the plumber fixes a lead flashing to make watertight the junction of the roof with the chimney. We see him raking out the brickwork joints for insertion of step flashing to face of chimney. The flashing is securely fixed into position with lead plugs. And the joint is then pointed with cement mortar. Having completed the laying of the tiles, the tiler proceeds to make his work watertight by setting into position the capping tiles on the hips and ridges. Then to finish his work, the roof tiler securely ties the tiles to the fixing batten with copper wire. A small lug is cast on the tile for this purpose. Once the roof covering is on, the structure is complete and the plasterer begins the work of adding the finishing surface to the walls. After this operation, the ceilings may then be fixed. The painter, who meanwhile has been prime coating all painted timber and joinery, now gives the cement rendered walls a priming coat. Electrical switches are fixed and a neat cover plate completes the job. In the kitchen, the plumbing fittings have been placed in position and a plumber fixes the water taps. The carpenters have built into position the kitchen cupboards and fix a skirting to the wall. On the exterior, the painters are busy applying the final coat of paint. This is exacting work and requires careful consideration and careful application. Meanwhile, the carpenters are fitting and hanging the sashes to the box frames. Note the sash weights, which must be of the correct weight in order to balance the glazed sash. And note how smoothly the sash runs up and down because it has been correctly fitted. Having completed the building, attention must now be given to outside requirements. Paths must be formed, steps built, and all work left clean and tidy on completion. The architect, builder, and everybody concerned is pleased and satisfied with the result of this project because it is the product of good planning, good craftsmanship, and good teamwork. In this film, you have seen the importance of coordinated effort on the part of all trades. May it serve as a guide to all who are interested in good construction, no matter how small your task. 
Your part is necessary in order to achieve a successful objective. Remember, teamwork ensures success. <laughs>